The Low Car Car Show goes to the Brothers Show and Shine in Anaheim, California, where it's Chevy's as far as the eyes can see. We start with a Chevy carryall, loved by its owner for its rare body style. I like the body style because it's a very unique body style. You use, I go to a lot of car shows, and when I go to the car shows, you very rarely see these body styles. And so every time I go to car shows, I see different body styles, and it pretty much always seems kind of like the same, just painted differently. But this one I hardly see, and so that's why I chose this one, because it was a unique body style. I wanted it to be a little different, and that's why I went ahead and, and chose this vehicle to do a complete restoration on it. And this is the outcome of that restoration. I actually didn't do the work myself. It was a gentleman by the name of Armando Vega that did all the work. He lives up in Oxnard. He's the one that did all the work. And uh, my understanding, he did it all on his own. Oh, I don't put a lot of miles. I only usually bring it out for car shows. And I usually try to pick and choose the car shows because there's so many of them. And so I go to the ones that I know is gonna make a difference. So this one is a good car show. It's a truck car show, so I brought it here. Every once in a while on Sunday, I get up in the morning and take it for a little cruise and then get put it back in the garage and then just enjoy it. I forget what year it was, but I won a plaque for best interior. I'm gonna change the rims. I'm gonna put artillery rims. They have the original rims on there now, but what I like to put on there now is my next step is to put artillery rims on there. So that's what I'm working on right now to put those on there. I think it will make the car look a lot nicer. Next, a hunk of junk becomes a treasure. Well, I bought this 34 years ago uh, from my uncle. It was in the backyard and it was a piece of trash and I only paid $200 for it. Redone the frame, uh, the wire suspension in the front, uh, had it sandblasted, powder coated, put a new engine in it, well, rebuilt the engine, transmission. It's a 12 volt system. It's uh, power steering, power disc brakes, tilt steering wheel, power windows, a lot of stuff, a lot of time into it. Uh, about 10 years of the time and a lot of money. I, it's a truck, it should be a four-speed transmission. I can't see automatics in the truck. It's on the floor. It was a three-speed on the column. I changed it when I put the tilt in it, so I had to put a four-speed in it. But it runs great. Approximately 745 miles on it. I drive it to the shows and that's it. And that's within the last five years. It's a 235, it's, I had it rebuilt, it's all stock, although it does have a Wayne, a Clifford intake with a Wayne valve cover, it's got a four barrel on it, 390 CFM, and the transmission's off uh, 82 Camaro, it's Saginaw saw four speed. The drivetrain is open drive, it's got the 58 Chevy rear end on it with 355 gearing. It runs great. I had gone car shows, I've seen other trucks and cars, and I ran into a guy, I asked him about his pinstriping, and he gave me a guy's phone number. I called him over, we talked, and I, I told him I just want something subtle. I don't want to get over extravagant. I want two, three different colors. I just want one color. So he said he can do it. I left him alone. Two hours later, it was done. Our next Chevy continues a family tradition. I grew up, my grandfather had it, my dad had one, 63 to 66. I, I just grew up with them, I always wanted one. Found one, started working on it. The engine, front disc brakes, has a 350. Lowered uh, spindle coil, uh, spindle block in the back. Did the oak, put the oak wood in the bed, stainless steel strips. And my friend of mine, told me about the Foose wheels, and I went and looked at them, and, and, and I liked them. Well, you know, Foose is a big name, so yeah, that's why I got it. And how did he decide what color to paint the truck? I've seen it on TV. The color, we, me and my wife were watching t TV. We were thinking about what color to paint it, and we seen it on TV, and then that was it. It's an it's a indigo blue. It's off of a 96 uh, Suburban. A couple times a month, 
Yeah, a couple of times a month I'll take it out on a Sunday, you know, Sunday cruise. Nice, just cruise around town. I'll get the wife, we'll go have burgers and hang out. And, yeah. I've been here in 2012 and then this year. That's why you come. <laughs> That's why you put all the money into it. Coming up, a C-10 Brotherhood dominates the event. This Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by Low Car Performance Products, quality, plain and simple. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Brothers Truck, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. And by Flowmaster, the exhaust technology company. A common sight was the C-10 Club, whose members all look out for each other. It's a 72 Chevy, short fleet. It's got a uh, pumped up 350 small block in it with a 700R four-speed automatic transmission, 373 gears, and uh, it's got air, a uh, stereo system. The color is what they call Sunfire Yellow. It's an old Corvette color. I had a 56 Chevy in high school, and I had it painted that sunfire yellow, and I always loved it. Actually, I was looking for a pickup truck all over the state, uh, on Craigslist, you name it, and I couldn't find what I was really wanting for the price or whatever. And Renee uh, called me up and said, hey, I know where there's a pickup. And I said, really, where is it this time, you know, because I was going to the Bay Area and Sacramento and all over. And he says, right here in Atwater. I said, you're kidding me. He said, no. So we went over and looked at this, and I bought it. I just paid him full cash for it. He said it was yellow, but usually yellow is kind of a faded yellow. But uh, this one was the color. There were about eight of us that, that came in, and then there was others joined, joined up with us. We all know a little bit about each part of the truck. Uh, we've got a guy that paints. We've got a guy that's a body man. Uh, I do engines and a uh, guy that does transmissions and uh, rear ends. And so when something goes wrong, we, they're looking at one of us for, for help and, and we, we provide that. Here we find a son's tribute to his passed on mother. I built three or four of these trucks over the last four years and I thought I was done building and um, I'm almost diagnosed with uh, colorectal cancer three years ago, so we started to build the truck in honor of her. Her nickname is Tootsie, so I decided to name it Tootsie Speed Shop, um, home of the fastest redhead because she has red hair. And um, thought she was going to pull through, but uh, we lost her about a week ago um, at our house, and my dad and I were around her when she passed away. We had uh, Nathan Porter from Porterbilt uh, build a full uh, one-off chassis for it. It's a tube chassis, and it's all gusseted. We have AccuAir Air Ride on it, the um, E-Level system on all four corners. We left the body pretty much bone stock other than the door logo, which was done by Klein's Lines. All of the motor is a Texas Speed engine. The motor makes about 1,000 horsepower at the crank. My partner, Jimmy Miller, and I pretty much built the whole truck in our garage. All one-off, hardline, stainless steel. The entire interior was built by Marquez Design, and the stitching was done by Vince at SeaWorks. All the panels in this truck are all one-off and are now available to the public. Jimmy and I did the entire bed on this truck. It's all one-off sheet metal. It has, it's been dimple dyed and it's backed with stainless steel. Bed wood got involved in the um, wood. It's got a sapale, which is a, a mahogany wood with maple strips. And we clear coated it about 10 times and cut it and buffed it. And it's got a Moon Ice 15 gallon round tank in the back. The floor has been raised 10 inches in order to clear the frame and all the suspension that's up underneath the, the back of the truck. My mother did get a chance to see it before she passed away. Uh, we were at SEMA this year. She just never got to see it completed with these wheels and the, uh, this interior. The C-10 Club gave their oldest member a big hand with this truck. It's the first series 1955. My brother gave it to me and it was a wreck and we took it completely apart and it took me four and a half years to put it together. I lost my wife. So it took it a little bit longer. 
But other than that, you know, it, uh, I, I did most of the work myself. Uh, some of the boys helped me and put some of the fenders on. They were too heavy. I had it painted out, but I put it all together, most of it, you know. That's uh, four and a half years of work. That's a special color, Granada. That's what we did on our trucks. We had some trucks, and this is the color we had on them. So that's why we call it Granada Green. The bed is oak wood. We, I put oak wood on there. We put the chrome strips on there. It got wet on me, and it turned a little color, so I sanded it pretty good. What I'm trying to do later on is probably turn it upside down. It's a better color on the bottom right now, you know, very clear. It takes a little a little work, but uh, with the, the screws in my hands, don't want it to work as uh, like the, the way it used to. Then we get it done. We got it done once, so we get it done again. I drive it quite a bit. I just changed from four speed to automatic, uh, 350, and then that was too slow, so I put 700R series, and now I got overdrive, so I can go all of 60 miles an hour now. For me, that's good. If anybody wants to go any faster, that's fine. You know? And of course, the boys gave me a lot of support, so it's just really, it really helps. It's a, it's, a, it's a family affair, yes, yes. So what is the C-10 Club? Its founder tells us the tale. About the year 2000, Christmas time, me and my, all my family members were getting into pickups really big and heavy, my kids, my cousins, my brother, we all had trucks and we we're putting them together. So my sister, my older sister, his twin, for the year 2000, Christmas time, bought me a hat and it said C10 Club. And I looked at the hat, I go, this is cool. Well, she brought my brother a hat and his was a little bit more of a project. It said C10 Wannabe. And I looked at the hat, I go, you know what, this is pretty cool. I can do something with this hat. So I went out and bought a dozen hats at C10 Club, not wannabes. And I gave them to my sons, my cousins, everybody that lived in the area. A couple of months later, my son put together a collage and we live in Northern California. He went to one of the pickup places in Fresno and made a collage and put it up there and said C10 Club. Well, the next thing you know, the owner of the place is calling me and saying, I got all these guys here that want to join your club. Next thing you know, all these people want to join us. Whenever we go places, we barbecue, we have a family atmosphere. No rules, no dues was the model we came up with. Next thing you know, we're starting to meet people from all over, all over the place. People, hey, can we come hang out with you? But my truck's not done, my truck's, we don't care. We don't care if you're painted, we don't care if you're primer, we don't, we don't care, as long as you're a cool person. But again, no titles, we're all the same. Nice of the round table. Coming up, a nostalgia truck gets some major upgrades. Welcome back to Anaheim, where the kids had as much fun as the gearheads. Now we see why this truck's owner calls it a Camaro. I always like the body style. It, it's specific for 58, 59 to have the dual headlights, and I kind of like that. Uh, the, the chrome treatment's around, and you know, when it's fixed up nice, it shines. A fellow, that my, my neighbor helped me with the body and the paint, and then I had a fellow farmed out the upholstery to another fellow. The chassis is done by me, and the motor arrangements, things like that. I have a Chevrolet 350 with a 400 trance, and it has a Chevrolet rear end in it. Basically, it's a Camaro with a uh, Chevrolet truck body sitting on it. Well, I looked at many color books and finally decided on this color. It, uh, it kind of popped. Uh, there's many different variations and shades of red that it's, it's really hard to choose. This, this is a PPG single stage uh, red, and it's called Toner Red. It's just like it comes out of the uh, squirter. There's no additional blues or, or grays or anything like that added to it. Well, this is number four, number four. I had a 60, and then I had a Dodge, and then I, I've got a, an old, a, a newer Dodge now that's mine, and then I got this one for my my truck. We went to Hemet from Norco. We've, uh, we go into LA quite a bit to different uh, functions. Uh, never have taken it out of the state yet, but uh, this local driving, I've only had it on the road since January. We drive it to shows around. Uh, we don't, it's, uh, we were trying to build a daily driver, but it works out that it's better just to take it to shows. I never trailer it though.
This old time pickup got a big taste of today. I had uh, purchased the truck from the guy who originally painted it from uh, Phoenix. And when I was looking for uh, something to work on, then I saw it and I just fell in love with it and it was different. That's why I chose it. It's a copper colored paint and at the time you didn't see anything that was copper. So it was just perfect for me. I've repainted a lot of the parts of the vehicle that needed some touch up. I've completely redone the truck. The whole interior has been completely redone. We've wrapped the dash in leather and uh, everything else, the back windows. I've completely uh, redid the motor and added inner fender wells that we had fabricated. Uh, we added the blower on the motor, which made it over 600 horse. It's a 355 Chevy. It's bored over. It's bored out 30 over. So it's roughly, it was roughly over 300 horse. And when we added the 671 blower on it, it almost doubled the horsepower. Got a 400 uh, turbo with a shift kit in it. Ford nine inch rear end with Posi 379 gears. The suspension, the front end is a 1979 Camaro Clip, which gave me power steering, power brakes, and the rear end is a four link setup. I got my upholster and we uh, decided on what we were gonna do and we it was a time consuming uh, piece here, piece there, and uh, we finally figured it out. I mean, I added a, a custom console that he took home and custom uh, wrapped it for me and then brought it back. So a lot of back and forth work. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, so I drive it in the city going to the shows. Even though it's a pro street, it's still gonna track a little bit, but it, it's not too bad. A little bumps, bumpy, but sounds good, looks good, that's all I care. The Brothers Truck Show has been going for 16 years. So how did it begin? The Brothers Truck Show started about 16 years ago, and we don't sell any parts at the show. We just do a get to know your customers and get to know everybody and kind of just enjoy part of what we do. The variety is incredible. We have everything from daily drivers to full-blown show trucks, as well as every possible configuration of pro touring style trucks, pro street style trucks, four-wheel drives, campers, just, just everything. We supply parts for 47 through 87 Chevy and GMC trucks. We've had a lot of fun growing up and we've got some long-term employees we've had a good time getting to know and growing together with, and we just enjoy what we do, which is good, because it keeps the, the business alive, it keeps us interested, and we enjoy our customers, and getting to do things like the, the truck show and shine every year, and kind of seeing people face to face, so that's kind of how it happened. Coming up, the perfect story of lost and found. This edition of the Low Car Car Show has been brought to you by Low Car Performance Products, quality, plain and simple. And by Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. And by Brothers Truck, your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. With this truck, the owner found what once was lost. Out of high school, I had me a 57 Chevy, and I restored it, not as nice as this, but I restored it. I ended up selling it, let it go too cheap, and after I sold it, I could kick myself. Why did I get rid of that truck? For years, I wanted another one, and I had the idea I'm gonna buy an old one and restore it, the poster, paint it, do the whole nine yards. I went to Morro Bay, and I spotted this. Fell in love with it immediately, and I talked to the owner for about 20 minutes, and I asked him, would you be interested in selling it? He goes, well, I never really thought about it. And then I said, well, if you sold it, what would you let it go for? So he gave me his price, and I said, well, if you're willing to let it go, I'm willing to buy it. And he said, really? He goes, well, okay. So I jumped on it, I bought it, I had to have it. I asked my wife, you think I ought to buy it? She says, you love the truck? I go, yeah. She says, buy it, buy it. So I did. And uh, I've been happy ever since for a whole month. We were in his home, a very nice gentleman and his wife. We sat in there for about four hours and made the deal. And he asked me, well, how are you going to get this home? And I said, drive it. And he says, drive it. Look in the backyard. You see that trailer? He says, this truck only knows that trailer. 
I never drive it anywhere. And you're gonna drive it all the way to Laguna Nagal? He says, oh, the car's gonna, that's gonna be strange for that truck. So he calls me two days later, he goes, Jim, how'd the truck make it? I said, it's beautiful, it ran great. Going over the grapevine, it's 92 degrees. I had the air conditioner on, going 72 miles an hour. Never got hot, it ran great. He goes, oh, thank you. I never thought I'd make it that far. This week's Low Car Lowdown, we're gonna make sure we know what gear we are in and do it in style and up to date with LED indicators. Jeff, you guys have had these out for a little while. Yeah, it's a product that we've had out for quite a while. We've made some updates through the year, or through the years, such as uh, going from a rod style actuated sensor to a, uh, uh, an adjustable U-cut to fit uh, cable operated sensor and a, and a programmable decoder box. Okay, so how, where do we mount this on our transmission? The good thing about the cable operated sensor is that you can mount it anywhere that you want. You can bolt it to run it around and mount it to the transmission. You can put it on a frame rail. Just get it out of your out of the way of the exhaust. It's real versatile in that manner. And, and always versatile with all of our choices that we have with low car on color. I mean, you, you have it in a couple of different designs here as well as where our indicators are gonna go, whether they're gonna be on which side that you want. And if you want it in the Midnight Series, or if you just want to be able to mount it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we offer them, uh, of course, the boot ring in vertical and horizontal with round and rectangular rings. We also do the uh, dash mount indicators in vertical and horizontal as well, and both of them are available in the brushed aluminum and Midnight Series. As we see, we, we have the boot here. Now, you can buy these things all individually, or Low Car makes it nice and easy, and you can just pick it up as a kid. You want to find out more? Hey, just hop on their website at lowcar.com and remember, made in the USA. That's it for the Brothers Truck Show and Shine. Next time, the Low Car Car Show takes you to Columbus, Ohio for a double dose of the good guys.